Um, hi everyone. Okay. Um, so today, today, this video is about basically the QR factorization. Okay. Um, you already know from row reduction that um, what you what you do when you do Gaussian elimination, say, is you have a matrix A, you do some elementary row operations, and that gives you a matrix P. So if you if you do Gaussian or Gauss Jordan, um, you know. If you do Gauss Jordan, you get um, you find invertible P, and uh, reduced row echelon matrix or REF matrix R with P A equals R. Okay, that's what that's Gauss Jordan. Okay. And for the QR factorization, well, instead of an invertible matrix, we're gonna look for an orthogonal matrix. And instead of an REF matrix, we're just gonna look for uh, basically like an upper triangular matrix. Okay. Or I guess you, should, you could also say like, um, you could alternatively write this like A equals P inverse R, okay. And then you can use this to like um, solve a system of equations or something, but you can also use QR factorization to solve a system of equations. And there's a kind of benefit in that uh, Q is orthogonal. It's just um, maybe like a little bit more stable in some situations, roughly. Okay, so let me state um, the theorem. that says, uh, you know, like QR factorizations exist. So let A be an M by N matrix. Okay, let's just suppose M is greater than or equal to N and there exists a unitary matrix matrix V um, an upper triangular matrix R and the entries of R on the diagonal are all positive Like this, where um, the R11, R22, all the way up to RNN are greater than or equal to zero, and they're all re like all the diagonal entries are real numbers that are non negative, and we have the equation that A equals the unitary matrix V times a block matrix, the top of the block is R, and then followed by zeros. Okay. And not only that, if you write, if you, if you write uh, V in block form, and, and split it up into the first N columns, and then Q prime is the um, M minus, the last M minus N columns, you write it like that then a is actually equal to q times r okay. Okay. so um, these matrix factorizations they can help us like solve linear systems of equations and things like that okay. um, there is a kind of uniqueness statement to this theorem, which I'll write on this side, 
if if the rank of a is actually equal to n which is um, the number of columns of a then q and r are unique and all the r's like the elements of the diagonal r of r are all positive Okay, that's part of the theorem too. Okay, so how do we prove this theorem? Well, um, it's just how we described. We just do, instead of row reduction, we use these householder matrices. Or, I mean, there's other things you can do besides householder matrices, but it, it would have the same um, flavor. You just try and use a orthogonal matrix to transform the first column into uh, a multiple of, like, the vector with one in the first entry and zeros everywhere else. Okay. So proof. Um, because it's a video, I guess I have time to go through all the all the details. Right. So the proof is going to be: let's do it by induction on n. Okay. So, if n equals 1, we need to find, okay, what is our situation? Then a is m by 1. In other words, a is just a column vector. So a is just in cm or rm, according, like depending if we're working over the complex of the real numbers. Okay is m by 1 and what is our goal our goal is to write we need to write a equals um, an orthogonal matrix Q or uh, unitary matrix Q maybe I'll write it as Maybe I'll write it as V times, and now R has to be a one by one matrix, upper triangular, all upper triangular matrices are one by one. Okay. So we're gonna write it as the norm of A followed by zeros. Okay. So this is a vector whose first entry is the norm of the vector a and the rest of the entries are zero and we have m minus one entries of zero okay so if we write the columns of v as u1 up to un okay what we want to find is uh, an orthonormal basis for for um, CM you oh, this should be M an orthonormal basis for CM um, such that the norm of a times u1 is equal to a okay and that's that's easy so you just take take u1 to just be um, the vector a is an m by one like um, m by one matrix divided by the norm of a. Now you have a unit vector, and then you just apply Bram Schmidt or whatever you want. Then you apply Bram Schmidt to the vectors. Um, start with u1 and then you just like do the standard basis u1 e2 all the way up to em okay. basically you just find a unitary matrix whose first column is a divided by the norm of a okay and so the output is 
U1 up to UM, orthonormal basis for either CM or RM as the case may be. Okay. And in other words, so what does the QR um, factorization say for this like M by one case? It says that A is equal to the vector U, U1 times the norm of A. Okay, that's what the QR is. So, so that's what it's doing in the base case, N equals one. Okay, oh yeah, that's not the end, that's just a base case. Okay, so now assume that uh, the theorem holds for um, matrices A prime with that are M by N minus one matrices that are M by N minus one. We have to show that theorem holds for matrices which are m by n, and here m needs to be greater than or equal to n minus 1. Okay, so let A be an m by n matrix, and here m is greater than or equal to n. Okay, let A be the first column. Okay, and what do we do? Well, we just find um, then we let um, y, this is going to be the vector norm of a times e1. Okay. Now there exists a unitary or an orthogonal matrix, like depending on if Y has real entries or complex entries. So let's say real, a unitary or orthogonal matrix V1 such that V times Y, or sorry, no, 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 um, such that V times A equals Y. Okay, so what does that mean? That means when I take my matrix A and multiply it by V, well, let's write out the columns of A are A1, A2, up to AN, and we multiply by V, we get the first column of VA is VA1, second column is VA2, and so on. Okay, now let's write out, this is like by block matrix multiplication. Now VA1 is the, the vector whose first entry is the norm of A and the rest are zeros. Okay. Um, now let's split up the rest of the matrix like this. We'll split it up into blocks. There's some stuff here we don't care about. And then there's a matrix A prime. And this matrix is A prime is M minus 1 by N minus 1. Okay, so by induction, A prime has a factorization. Has a factorization uh, as. V prime, or I'll say like U prime maybe, times R prime followed by zeros. Okay. And the R prime and U prime, like the conditions are, occur in the statement of the theorem, right? Let me just remind you, um, V prime is uh, M minus one by M minus one unitary matrix. R prime is a, n minus one by n minus one upper triangular matrix with um, non-negative entries on the diagonal. 
and we have this factorization for a prime. Okay, so let's go back down. Well, that means this factorization lets us um, actually factorize uh, a as well. Okay. So what do we do? So let me just, let me not call it u prime, let me call it just u. Okay, so that's VA. Now what happens when we multiply VA by this matrix? By the matrix, one, u. This is a unitary matrix. So u is n minus one by, or sorry, m minus one by m minus one. I've just added a ones like in the top left and zeros everywhere else. Okay, so, uh, and I don't want u, I actually want u um, inverse or because u is uh, unitary, I can multiply, I can take u star. Okay, so what happens when we, uh, let's call this, um, let's call this matrix, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe like double, w, I guess, that's not so good, but oh well. Okay, so what happens when we do w, v, a? Well, we just use block matrix multiplication. So VA has the form one, some stuff here, zeros here. And then um, VA has the form A prime here. Okay. Now when I multiply these two as block matrices, I get, again, another two by two block matrix. I get um, one, I get Zero, zero vector zero vector times one plus u star times zero well that's just zero okay and then to find out this stuff well it's just this stuff times one plus zero times a prime so it's just some other stuff so some some other stuff there I guess you can say it's like maybe the same stuff as as you had in, in in this factorization for VA. Now what happens when I do, um, when, to find this row, well I do this stuff times zero, okay luckily that all goes away, and then I do U star times A prime. But U, A prime is just U times this upper triangular matrix and u star u is just the identity. So what happens is we get a one. Oh, sorry. Um, here is this is not one. This should be the norm of a. Sorry about that. So um, you actually get um, norm of a here. Sorry about that. Okay, so you have norm of a. You have some zeros. You have some some stuff that you don't care about. And then you have u star a prime, which is really um, u star u times r prime. In other words, you get r prime. And then followed by zeros. Okay. And if you want, you can split up this zero into zeros followed by zeros. Okay. And now r prime is an upper triangular matrix. And so now this this new matrix is one size bigger and it's still upper triangular and the only introduction is you, you inter introduce this um, like the first entry now has now is the norm of a which is um, non-negative so on so um so now you've found a unitary matrix w times v okay such that W V times A is upper triangular matrix followed by zeros. In other words, um, that completes the induction step. Okay, so you take your um, 
to to write to find the factorization, you take um, the inverse of W V, which is just V star W, and so you have A equals V star W star times this matrix, which is like first entry A and then R R prime and then zero zeros followed by zeros like that. Good. And that is the end of the proof, more or less. Okay. So and then you'd say like, you know, by induction, the theorem holds, blah blah blah. Um, I did not check the uniqueness. Um, but I hope you don't mind. Okay, so that's um just a quick introduction. Well, not that quick, but an introduction anyways to um a QR factorization. Also the proof also tells us how to find the QR factorization. Okay. Okay, um anyways, thank you for watching. Um see you guys later. Bye.